Hi guys, Dave Wilson here again. Now, silver cufflinks are a great beginner's project. Once you've learned to solder, you can make an infinite variety of cufflinks and they're great for all occasions, very easy to sell, very quick, cheap and easy to make. And thanks to a range of high quality findings, they're now even easier than ever. So, grab some silver, follow me, let's make some cufflinks. So the secret to making cufflinks is to use good quality findings. Here I've got some sterling silver cufflink backs and I can tell you that these are particularly good ones. Firstly, they're very solid with a good weight to them. They lock in position very firmly so they're not likely to get lost. And they also have nice little detail on the ends. And each one is discreetly marked 925 for sterling silver. To use them, all you have to do is solder them onto a silver shape and you're done. It really is as simple as that. So let me give you a few ideas and a few tips. The simplest thing you can use is something that's already made, such as a small silver coin. Here in the UK we have silver shillings, sixpence, threepence and a few larger coins which are all sterling silver. But if you check out bullion suppliers, you can also buy silver rounds, which are currently very cheap. For example, these are quarter ounce Lydian lions and these have got a nice design on one side and a paw print on the other. And they also have dates on, so these are great for weddings, birthdays or an anniversary gift. And again, these are just a few pounds. Solder them on the back and you're done. So how cool is that? If you want to make your own designs, I'd recommend 0.7 to 1mm thick sterling silver sheet. You can just cut out a shape with a piercing saw and solder it on the back and you're done. Uh, the only limit really is your imagination. Just bear in mind though to leave the centre of the design solid so that you've got an area to solder the fitting onto the back. If you have a disc cutter, you can stamp out a disc and either engrave it yourself or take it to your local key cutters and get a name or message engraved on it, rather like a pet tag. Again, a great personal gift but very, very easy to do. If you want to be more adventurous and build up something like a bezel with a small cabochon or storm, I would make the bezel with hard solder and then use easy solder to attach the cufflink back and then set the stone the last thing. Well I'm sure you're keen to see what I've done. So I'll show you. This is a 20mm square of 1mm thick sterling silver sheet. Now I ordered two of these and they came pre-cut so no messing about. On the fronts I've etched a design. Now this is really something for another video but in short the process is similar to making electronic circuit boards. I sized and reversed the design on my computer, printed it out onto blue press and peel sheet, ironed it onto the silver squares and then masked off the back and I dipped the pieces in ferric nitrate for about 20 minutes. Uh, and what this does is it dissolves the exposed silver but where the printed design is that acts as a resist. So that's why it's important to invert the image beforehand. And the final result is a very detailed etched design. Really cool, but very, very easy to do. Now, before you solder, you might want to polish the backs because it'll be difficult later when the fittings are attached. I'm also going to round off the corners too. So here we go. I've got the fronts, I've got the backs. So let's go and solder them up. First, I'm just going to sand the ends and likewise sand the backs of my cufflinks. You may want to mark the centre too so that you know it will all line up. And also make sure that you know which way round they need to be. The T-bar should be horizontal. I'm using easy solder paste here just for convenience. I could use pallium solder and borax but this is just a nice way to do it with minimum clean up after. A pair of locking tweezers is going to be really helpful here to hold the backs in place and also to avoid excessive heat. Some fittings you can get have springs in them and so you don't want to get excessive heat on them. So I'm applying heat here to the large square and just when the solder is starting to melt bring the heat up to the fitting and we're done. Cool, quench and pittle. So here they are out of the pittle. A nice clean solder joint so no real clean up there. Just a quick brush up with a brass brush or if you've got a tumbler give them half an hour or so and you're done. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to oxidise these with liver sulphur, but I don't want everything to go black. So I'm applying it carefully with a paintbrush. When it's dark enough, rinse off and finish with a buffing pad for a nice satin finish. And we're done. So from start to finish, these have taken me about an hour, including the etching process. 
and the thing is they've only cost a few pounds to make solid silver heavyweight cufflinks now what would you pay for these in a high street jewelers and of course you don't have to just stop at cufflinks how about a matching tie clip lapel pin or a money clip all very easy to do with the right fittings so i've been dave wilson thanks for watching and see you soon on the next video bye for now